Hello YouTube, it's been a while. I know I said before I'd be getting into making these kind of videos more regularly and... Let me just straighten this out here. There we go. There's like the opening sequence to Ed, Ed and Eddie there. Uh, I'm gonna try and get back into that. I know I said I was gonna do that last time, so fingers crossed I'll stick to it this time. You've probably noticed my uh, a Ricky O review has been taken down. That was due to a copyright takedown notice from uh, Fortune Star Media. With luck, we'll be able to take care of that. However, given how unresponsive they are, that seems unlikely. Uh, but instead, I want to get back into making uh, vlogs about stuff that I've seen as of late. Uh, namely, good place to start, One Punch Man. I finally got through all of that, and I have a lot of great things to say about it. I have no real criticisms that I can think of off the top of my head. It is a show that pokes fun at anime and manga without directly mocking it. At least not... not venomously so. Uh, I, I would look at this more on terms of mystical ninja as uh, the degree to which it's making fun of it. It's good-natured and there's a bit of tongue-in-cheek going on in there, but mostly this is a story that is not... Kind of got a Dutch angle going now. This is not a story uh, about a conclusion, so if you're going to watch it, realize that it's a story about open or new beginnings as opposed to any kind of conclusion. So if there are things that aren't explained or aren't tied up or aren't concluded, well, there's a reason for that, and it is intentional. It's not sloppy writing. The story itself is also about uh, Saitama, a, an average guy who is able to kill anything he faces with a single punch. He is a superhero as a hobby and on the side. He does not have a job. He does not have a girlfriend. He lives by himself in a single-room apartment. He is, in all intents and purposes, a loser but he ends up being a more effective superhero than the professional superheroes. In fact, he starts out better than the most effective superheroes. I see a lot of social commentary, especially in the Japanese system, from One Punch Man, and I would strongly advise watching the, uh, the subtitled version and not the dubbed version. I don't know if there is a dubbed version. I saw it on Netflix, and I loved it. I think this is a good way to look at uh, to look at it. Uh, it's got a scathing view of standardized testing, and that is all prevalent in Japanese culture and is a plague upon their school system. We've seen the kind of stuff that it does to the minds of the people as they become adults, and it doesn't really go away once they are adults. And One Punch Man definitely has strong opinions on it. Uh, Saitama eventually is convinced to take the superhero's exam to become an official superhero and get paid for what he's been doing for free all this time. He exceeds phenomenally well in the physical uh, physical portion of the exam, but utterly fails in the uh, written portion. So this puts him in the C rank, the lowest rank of acceptable superheroes. There's C, B, A, and then the highest rank is S. You can move up and down these by means of a leaderboard of popular opinion. So he's able to, over the course of time, gradually work up. This alone shows you the first flaw. It doesn't take in a case-by-case -case basis. It puts someone, according to numbers, into categories. And these numbers and categories become meaningless very quickly, especially when some of the monsters begin showing up. The higher rank uh, superheroes don't do much, and what we do see them doing more frequently is failing, setting things up for Saitama to show up and show just how good he is. Even in terms of the uh, Deep Sea King fight, and the Deep Sea King... Deep... I'm tripping over myself here, excuse me. The fight with Deep Sea King, you will not be ready for. There's a lot of reasons, some of them are comedic. You won't be ready for his design, I promise you that. And when you see Puri Puri Prisoner, I'm assuming that means Pretty Pretty Prisoner, <laughs> um, you 
you're probably going to react the same way to him as you do to Deep Sea King for roughly the same reasons. And um, some of it does have to do with his personal writing. Uh, but we see uh, superheroes being called in, sometimes erroneously, according to their categories, and being thrown against him. And they're like meat, they're like they're going to a meat grinder. They're just crumbled and tossed aside. There's even a point where they, the bystanders are really playing up the ranks of the superheroes that are responding. Even the heroes themselves are getting uh, confidence, and falsely so, from the high ranks of the heroes that are among them. And they're all being torn apart. I think S rank and A rank spend more time in the entire series, not just uh, against Deep Sea King, fleeing from battle or ignoring the call to battle than they are responding to anything. We don't see the top two S rank heroes at all in the series, and most of the S and A rank either leave, walk away, ignore the fight, or get beaten. I recall one character, I don't remember his name unfortunately, who can't be arsed to walk away from an interview that he's doing for his fashion line or photography line, or I don't even care why he's uh, doing the interview. All I care is that he's a, a high-ranking hero who is flat out ignoring a catastrophe. He's letting innocents be slaughtered, not even for vanity, it's just he doesn't care. He's almost a sociopath, and you see this a great deal. You see heroes who are supposed to be icons of virtue and stepping up to save the day and oppose villainy who ignore it and don't involve, don't get themselves involved at all. Saitama will get himself involved for very personal reasons, but also very good reasons. He is a hero for himself. He's a hero, and he comes right out and says this, he's a hero because a hero is needed at the time. And he'll end up being uh, the hero that everyone needs more than they deserve. Or maybe it's the other way around. I never understood it when it was said in uh, Dark Knight Rises. But he's like, that written less pretentiously. This is a great show. Uh, that's mostly all I have to say about it at the moment. Um, take a look at it. Watch it for yourself. Come up with your own views. Realize, though, that it's not going to have... Uh, quite the conclusion that you are looking for. The conclusion that it does have is uh, it serves its story very well, it serves its message, and probably if you watch it in terms of symbolism, you are likely going to see themes that I missed and something is going to speak to you. Uh, what spoke to me was having uh, your abilities, being able to uh, progress, being able to show your skills, be uh, effective at what you do, but not being appreciated for it. And it's at the point where the people who should be seeing and should be appreciating his abilities and should be uh, grateful to have Saitama as a hero aren't. And it's very telling who is and is not grateful and appreciative of Saitama's involvement and who does and does not stand by him. Watch it with an open mind, but that probably won't be necessary since even if you're not looking at it from a symbolic or a metaphorical standpoint, or even as a, a social commentary, it's still entertaining as hell. The fights are great, and this is coming from a guy who does not like the f typical fighting that you see in anime. But this show handles everything with a sense of humor. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but when you do see humiliated villains coming back, they're not returning as hero, they're not returning as villain, they return as people. And I think that is the most important part. The lower end villains, the ones who are beaten, shamed, and then make a return, are making returns in mundane and professional capacities. They are... they're being forced to use what they had been using before in a helpful, beneficial way 
that is socially acceptable. And this very much says there is a very thin line between being a hero and being a standard member, being a hero, being a villain, and being a contributing member of society. And I think it's important that, actually, it, yeah, it says it very clearly. It's important to know where you stand, and it's important to know where others stand. No one does things for no reason. Everyone has a motivation. Their approach may be bad, but they might have a decent motivation for doing so, and if their core is sound, they might be swayed, one way or the other. And now I'm just starting to ramble, but that's something that just occurred to me now while I'm reviewing this. So I encourage you, watch One Punch Man and see what other things come out to you. I'm the camper, and hopefully I'll be seeing you sometime soon.